Dear brothers and sisters, this is Christopher. In this video, I want to talk about a few dreams that I've had recently and their importance and what I believe the Lord is communicating through these dreams that I've received. I had a dream of... This is recent, within the last week. I had a dream of this being in my home and it was as if um, it was my childhood home or when I was younger and there was a woman in front of me who I knew was a demon in the form of a woman and she um, exuded very evil energy and she was speaking to me and as soon she told me that she was the it demon uh, it's it's that's the movie um, it from and the book from Stephen King that demon she said that she was that demon um, and when she told me that I rebuked her in the name of Jesus and I and I tried to cast her out in the name of Jesus Christ and she said uh, she basically said to me that that won't work because I've been given authority to do what I'm doing that is what happened and then she showed me that she had been given permission by God to torment and attack people because of their sin. So, yeah, sin had given the demons authority over the person. And sin and rejection of Jesus, rejection of God. So that was interesting, and I believe that there is a lot of significance to these monsters and evil creatures that they show us in movies, that there is evil forces that are behind them, and that they are real entities, they're a spiritual adversary, and by indulging ourselves in observing these things, we are, we are essentially inviting them to us and we do so also by unrepentant sin in our lives that gives the enemy authority over us the Lord says that we cannot abide at the table of God and the table of demons he tells us that and that is an interesting dream that I received and the Lord has been showing me the consequences of sin that there are always consequences to sin and the Lord is good to forgive us when we repent and we try to turn from our sins the Lord can strengthen us and give us the power to do so because without him we are nothing he is the vine we are the branch so by him we can overcome sin by him we can overcome and we are weak but he is strong and his grace and his strength is made perfect in weakness. So, that requires humility and repentance before the Lord. But, when we do not repent, and when we abide in sin, and when we abide in worldly ways and subject ourselves to things that are actually demonic, that the enemy then has authority over us. We have by our own actions and by our own deeds we have granted the enemy authority over us so be aware of this now in the past I used to I never saw the movie it I never read the book but I saw a movie cover in like a milk bar once and the movie cover by itself terrified me um, and I would think about it and talk about it with my friend and because I, because I was constantly, I was going over it and talking about it and, and I ended up building it up more and it became something that I actually invited into my life and I had a very terrifying dream once about uh, that demon um, taking a bite out of my side and um, when I was younger, but 
it was showing me in this dream that this demon was given authority to act because of the sin and because of the rejection of the Lord and his ways. And that is the truth. I know that for certain. I've had it shown to me various times in my life. It's the same thing with drugs and addiction. They allow the enemy authority over you. They allow the enemy forces to come upon you and to bring you down. Now, you aren't lost, but when you have the enemy going after you in these ways, they make it very difficult for you to come to the truth. They deceive you and your thinking and your mind to turn you away from Jesus, to turn you away from holiness, to turn you away from righteousness and they will convince you in every manner of way and the the worst thing about all of this is that demons are deceptive and they do influence us and they do uh, these are the, the temptations in our mind that are just evil um, they're not from God they're from the enemy and we are in a spiritual battle against the forces of evil this is scripture and I want to share that with you. Now, another one which confirms this. I had this recently as well in the last few days. This was this was full on. Um, I was staring at a computer screen and there was a game open. And the game was like, not the full width of this computer screen, but it was um, open. And the game was called The Cup of sin of mankind is overflowing and that was the game and I don't recommend you look this up but there is a game called Cuphead and I've seen it it's a recent game that came out it's a uh, very polished and like kinda looks like Disney but it's all about demons and serving Satan it's all about uh, fulfilling tasks given to you by the, the devil it's, it's a demonic game. It's, uh, it's laden with like demonic things. It's not something you want to expose yourself to or play it. Because um, by doing so, you invite demonic attraction to your life. It's the same thing with all the things that are against God. Fortune telling, remote viewing, channeling, uh, divination... Familiar media mediums, all of that stuff, any sorcery, all these false religions, false god worship, idol worship, pretty much all of these things, they allow the enemy authority over you. They bring en the enemy into your life. It is not good at all. And I played another game called Don't Starve. It's like a, it's a kind of like a survival horror game. I played it recently for just a little bit and there's just so much occultic demonic imagery in there and by the act of you playing those games and looking at that stuff you are actually like what could you be doing you could be spending time with the Lord or seeking him or you could be like enjoying yourself by exposing yourself to demonic imagery it is not good and there are consequences for it I had a dream a very like strong demonic attack dream the the night after I chose to play that game for a short amount of time and they have uh, these this when it go, turns night in that game there is these hands like demonic hands that come out of the darkness and try to they try to steal away your fire and if you don't have fire they will they'll kill you at night um, this is not a game that children or anyone should be playing. Uh, there's, especially the recent games, I've found that they're like, it's like they've cursed them or hexed them before they've like released them. They're full of like demonic stuff. You do not want to mess with them. So anyway, back to my dream. Sorry, it was a bit of a tangent, but the dream, as I was looking at the screen, the game came up and it said, the cup of sin of mankind is overflowing. Then the game began and I went into the screen but then I was like at my property and I was outside and I looked around and there were demons just everywhere. They were 
like, you know, from Jurassic Park, like Velociraptor, those demons, yeah, they are demons. They are, they're not as we are told. Anyway, um, there was different sized ones, there was small ones, and I had my sword, and I was uh, trying to, f I went and fought one of them, and I slashed at it, and it, and I killed one of them, but then another one of them somehow, like, caught the sword in its claws and and chipped my sword, like, the, the cutting edge of the sword, and it, like, smirked at me. And it was clever. It, it had a mind of its own. It's It was a demon. It's not like a mindless beast. Although there are things that are mindless beasts. This was a, this was a demon. Anyway, and then I saw more demons, like... Aliens, things that look like aliens walking up, a big group of them. Um, green ones, I saw like various types of demons all across, around my property, like the land, like coming towards it. So I ran inside the building and tr was trying to shut the door, but the door, it couldn't be shut. The lock was, was all gone, the locking mechanism, so I could only hold the door. And then as the demons were pressing onto it, the door was being opened, and I saw this, like, large, giant... Yeah, there were giant demons, too. This giant green demon that kind of looked like the Hulk, um... Pressing in with its head, and I shoved something into its eye, trying to fight it. And, uh, other demons were trying to get their way in. And there was other people inside the building, and... And then, um... They got through, and it's like I came out of my... Like I wasn't in the same perspective, and I was in another room as they busted through. And then I was like, for some reason, in the other room. And as they came in, I heard them like eating the people that were inside. And they were screaming and yelling, and they were tearing them apart and eating them. And um, and I, I went on my knees to pray to the Lord. I was like, Jesus, please save me. Lord, help me. And... Um, and then the dream ended as I was killed and eaten. That was the dream. So I think the message is quite clear there. Um, this is going to happen at a certain point in time when the demons come upon the earth that there is no more time for repentance. Even if you call upon the Lord, He will not listen to you. He will not answer you because you have been given the opportunity to come to Him and you refused. And it showed me that even calling upon the Lord at, in that time, you will not be saved because he will not hear you. And there is scripture about like different examples of the Lord saying that he will not hear people um, who call upon him. Now this was shown to me then. And this was the dream was the cup of sin of mankind is overflowing, overflowing evil. And it's only getting worse, and it's going to continue to get worse. And what the Lord is going to do is He's going to allow these demons to come upon the earth and destroy and kill the sinners and ungodly. That's what He's going to allow. And at a certain point, calling upon the name of the Lord, is it's too late. And that's what I believe that dream shows. So, it's very serious. We live in a serious time. Uh, the stakes are very high. It's our very souls, the lives and souls of our families and friends, our loved ones and all in the earth. The battleground is over the souls of man, and our enemy is the devil, Satan, who is real. He's a fallen angel, commanding his armies of fallen angels and demons. Uh, not good. So, I mentioned in another dream video recently of like the T-Rex in the city and I was trying to, t he was coming to attack us and I was with a Jewish man and I was trying to tell the Jewish man he needs to pray to Jesus and call on Jesus for protection and it could, because I knew that I was protected and as the, as the T-Rex came and was about to eat him, basically eat us, it stopped when he yelled out Jesus and then and then the demon turned around and walked off, but he he denied it in his heart. He rejected calling on Jesus. 
because he said, no, I don't believe in Jesus, I believe in Yah, or, you know, who, the Jewish who think that they know God, but don't know Jesus. So, the, de the demon turned right back around and ate him. That ate him completely and didn't eat, touch me because I knew the Lord. And I knew the demon was going around and killing the sinners and killing the ungodly, those who don't know God. And this is like, this is obviously like in a time in the future when things are very bad. And this is going to be during the tribulation. But the Lord has shown me in multiple, multiple times the demons are going to be coming upon the earth and they will be slaying and destroying mankind, the sinners and ungodly. And from this dream, the, the previous one, the cup of sin of mankind, that there is a time coming when it's too late to find the Lord. That there is a time coming and um, we need to seek Him and draw near to Him. And I hope that as many are saved before this time comes. Because when this time comes, it's just destruction and death. And it's terrible. It's going to be so bad. Um, just the stuff I've seen is terrible. And that's not... It's not even the full understanding of it. So... Just wanted to share that. So... Sin allows demonic authority over you. That is what it allows... Think about it, when the first man and woman sinned, authority was given to Satan and sin entered the world. The consequences of that sin were immense. And the Lord has shown me that sin has consequences in our lives. It does have consequences. You should know that and you should feel that. And you will see that when you turn from the Lord and you turn against Him, there are consequences that happen in your life. You may not observe them immediately, but things happen. The Lord is good to forgive us when we repent. We ask for forgiveness and when we turn from our sins. Repentance is forgive, asking for forgiveness and turning from your sins. It is spoken of that we need to repent in the scripture. Paul says uh, that the Gentiles spread the gospel to the Gentiles so that they know God and to bear works worthy of repentance. So repentance is an important thing. Jesus says, he has said, repent or perish. He calls the church into repentance in the first three chapters of Revelation. Uh, he says, every child that he loves, he rebukes and chastens. Be zealous and repent. So any believer in Christ is going to learn from the Lord and he's going to be shown things in their life that are not pleasing to the Lord and it's up to us what we do with that the Lord can show that to us but if we reject the Lord if we reject his chastening and correction if we say no I like that I don't want to change then there's going to be consequences and at a certain point the rejection of God and his ways can go so far that a Christian can lose their salvation. And this is um, it's written all throughout the scripture. I've made separate videos on it. I don't want to go over it and over it. But we need to take our relationship with the Lord seriously. And our faith in Him seriously. And we cannot continue to willfully abide in sin. Without expecting consequences. The scripture says it blatantly. It says uh, for those who are unfruitful. And don't abide in the body of Christ, in the vine of Christ, they'll be cast out and gathered to be burned. It says, um, if you continue to willfully abide in sin after you've received knowledge of the truth, there remains no more sacrifice for sins, but a certain expectation of fiery judgment that will devour the adversaries. So, there is plenty of other scripture about this. Um, I've dealt with this issue before, but there's a lot of people who think you can continue to sin with no consequence. That Sin does not affect your salvation. Now, when we receive the salvation of God, when we receive the Holy Spirit, when we are born again by faith in Jesus Christ, and we ask for forgiveness, and we repent, He wipes away our sins. He forgives us for what we have done. But when we continue to walk in the Lord, He wants us to be holy. He calls us to be holy. He wants us to be like Him. So... 
if we continue to refuse him and we don't like being we don't like following the teachings of God we don't like doing what he says at a certain point the Lord is not going to tolerate that the Lord says that he's going to vomit the lukewarm out of his mouth the Lord says those who don't repent he's coming at them with the sword there there's many there's just so many scripture about this people are getting themselves into a terrible trap because they do not take the whole counsel of God Paul said, I have not neglected to give you the whole counsel of God. Now, the whole counsel of God is, yes, faith is our salvation by the grace of God, faith in Jesus Christ. But there are other scripture that we need to pay attention to and take heed, that we need to work out our salvation with fear and trembling, that why does it say in scripture that we're given the example of those in Israel in the desert who, due to their disobedience and complaining, they were slain. They were destroyed for their sin. Why does the Lord say He will destroy the sinners from among His people in the Old Testament? Um, we have the same God. He did not change. So, taking the whole counsel of God means that we accept all of the Scripture and we accept it, what it says. And there are many warnings about not falling away from God and being close to him and not being of the foolish virgins who did not make it into the kingdom and who were cast away not being like the lawless ones who are cast away from the Lord who say Lord Lord I did so many things in your name I cast out demons in your name but were cast out Christians who didn't make it because of sin that is the Bible calls sin lawlessness so Look, that's just a bit of scriptural support for these these dreams. I think it's very clear to anyone who reads the word for themselves and who has had the experience in their life of the Lord purifying them, who has had the experience in their life of the Lord bringing them out from sinful things and you realize the change it makes in your life. You realize that the Lord does it for your good and we will still make mistakes, we will still have trouble. I am not free of sin, but the Lord is good to forgive me. He is good to wipe away the sins that I have done, and He is good to raise me and purify me from sin, that I may be like Him and grow in Him. And that's what He asks of us. That's what He wants of us. He wants us to be holy. So, I want to share that but the cup of sin of mankind is overflowing. That's right. The Lord is not happy. How many babies are murdered every single day under the guise of abortion, under what they call of termination of a fetus? They wrap a scientific label around it to take away from the fact that it's a murder of a child, murder of the unborn who would be an adult, who would grow to be a boy or a girl and be an adult. So many millions are slaughtered, and it's done in such a barbaric way. They literally like pull it out piece by piece in some occasions, tearing it out from the womb, the safest place that it should be safe. And the Lord is very grieved by this. It is not acceptable, and because we wink at it, because we think it's acceptable, I'm talking about mankind, there is going to be terrible judgments to follow for that terrible and the acceptance of perversion and the promotion of sin to the children through homosexuality through transgenderism through these things that are against God now God is not against their soul God wants for them to be saved and he doesn't want them to perish but this world is promoting perversion and evil and I had a dream, I was going to make this in another video, but I'll mention it now. I had a dream of there being, I'm going to talk more about this dream, but part of it was that there was, I came back, I was gone somewhere, and I came back, and the world had changed, and there was, everyone, 
I, I came and I saw this child and she was an AI robot. She was an artificial intelligence robot. And she said to me that every family has one. And she immediately, it was disgusting, but she like tried to um, get me to do something sexual with her immediately. Like she stripped or whatever and went into some terrible, anyway, it was disgusting. Anyway, I didn't look and I turned away and I stopped her from what she was doing. But she was programmed in that way to, to, uh, to please men. But she was like a 12-year-old child robot. And they've already talked about this, child sex robots. And saying that, oh, should they be acceptable? Should they be legal? It's just working towards what they wanted all the time. The whole time. Pedophilia. Accepted and normalized. And anyway, so basically they had this... AI robot that was like, it had different things it could do, but one of the things was that it was like in extremely sexual uh, and was used by men and all of that. It was, it was disgusting and perverted and it was totally acceptable because she told me every, every family had one. So then um, I had a dream a while back, and this was terrible as well, that I was in school, and the teacher, this was a state-run school, this is sometime later, and the teacher was talking about how it was, how encouraging the children to go and, this is, this is disgusting, warning, this is disgusting, she was encouraging the children to go and rape the other children that they knew, and to have sex with them. She was encouraging this. She was a blonde haired, middle, like older woman, um, maybe in her 30s or 40s. She was encouraging and teaching this to the children. And this was a state government run school. And the children were like, oh, like, it was acceptable. They were teaching disgusting, vile things in school, like way beyond what you would imagine. Like, it got so bad, and I knew in the in the dream that the schools were, like, incredibly controlled, um, completely controlled in what they, what they expose the children to. Now, look at what's happening in just, like, today's environment. They're teaching children about sex, homosexual sex, they're teaching them about masturbation and, and stuff that should not ever be in a school. These are children, and they're being taught all of these things about perversion and fornication and things like that, which are all against God. The, the stumbling blocks are being put before our children. And it says those who do that, it would be better if they were, a millstone was hung around their neck and they were drowned in the ocean. But they don't care because this is an evil agenda and there are demonic forces behind this and their end goal is utter and total lawlessness, which is what the scripture says is going to come. The man of lawlessness is also coming, who is Barack Obama, if you did not know that, um, who will come to power. Now, that was one part of the dream. Then, then as, as, I, as this woman was saying this in the classroom, telling, encouraging the children to go and... It was disgusting, um, what she said. And then I became incredibly angry and I spoke what I believe were the words of the Lord against her and I said that I decree like it was like the words came out and it was like decreeing judgment upon this woman for what she had done what she was encouraging and also it was judgment against all of the children and all of the people in the school system at the time the Lord was gonna base they became so corrupted they were so corrupted by evil the Lord was decreeing judgment against all of them. I mean, that, like, that is such a far cry from, you know, even where we are today, what I saw in that dream. But I do believe that that level of perversion is coming. Maybe it will be after, like, things change in the world. But it was disgusting. But yeah, it was terrible. And, um, 
my friend had a dream, my close friend, that um, men were uh, dropping off their children to a um, child prostitution brothel that was completely government run, run and controlled and normal in the in the world. And the man dropped off her child, and it was just a normal thing to do to earn money. And this this man dropped off his own child, and it was totally acceptable and normalized to drop off their like. Uh, young child to go and um, have sex with men all day and come back. This was normalized and encouraged and it wasn't a third world country. This is the evil that is coming and um, I had another one a while back of like seeing like a, a it was some, there was more about it but I saw this this demon in a dream and she was identifying herself as like some queen of the demons or whatever and um then i saw like a list it was like a of photos and i saw like a top line of photos and they were all demons and they all looked different and they were all like in their monstrous demon forms and it was showing me like ranks of an army like the top ones and then there was ones under them, and ones under them. These are all like the commanders. It showed me the top commanders, like the lieutenants under them, and then like the people under them, then the people under them. Each one like ran a large army. And then at the very bottom, they had politicians, celebrities, and people in the government that were Satanists. And it showed me what they were doing. And they were doing vile and terrible things to children. And it showed me that many, a lot of them were doing that. And it was so disgusting. Um, I didn't see what they were doing, but I knew what they were doing. And um, these these people are like straight servants of Satan. And um, yeah, part of what Satan asked them to do is vile and terrible things to the innocent. So yeah, it showed me a lot of them do that and that, that's terrible and I'm not saying that all of them do that and but there is a lot of Satanists who are in positions of power and celebrity and status around the world and they worship the devil and they do vile things so just wanted to share that and lawlessness and depravity is coming know that the Bible warns of it the days of Noah the Bible warns us against these sinful things that are against God, but the world calls them good. It calls evil good. And the scripture told us that it will. And even now, we are coming to the point where to criticize or to speak the truth of the scripture against these things, that is um, threatening jail time, it is threatening job loss, it is threatening, it is now... Um, close to the Bible actually being banned. Um, in California, the proposed law that would uh, prohibit any scriptural teachings on homosexuality and transgenderism, that it is against God. And what this does is it encourages and promotes homosexuality, transgenderism to the children in the schools, which they have already been doing. And this is an agenda and it will grow worse and worse and the perversion will increase and that is the goal and it is used as a weapon now god is not against gay and lesbian people he wants them to turn from their sins and to accept him but sin is sin and sin is against god and they are quickly moving to stop us from speaking the truth of the scripture um, persecution is coming the lord has warned us over and over they will deliver us up to death. We will be hated by all nations. Now, they justify perversion and evil in the name of love and tolerance. Now, here's one thing. Forgiveness is not the tolerance of evil. It is not accepting evil over and over and over again. Where there is no repentance and turning from the sin of evil. We are in a world that's growing more evil and evil and the world doesn't see it the world thinks that it's being more tolerant and it's more loving and it's more kind because it's more accepting of these alternative things 
but these things are actually going to lead to greater perversion. They're going to lead to greater lawlessness. They are against God. And none of the people who practice those things will inherit the kingdom of God, even if they are Christians. And Christians need to be careful. And I'm warning us Christians that we need to be careful to follow the word of God and what God tells us and not to tolerate, not to promote the views of the world. And we need to hold true to the scripture and hold true to the word of God. Now, people can do what they want and we can't force people to have faith in God. We can't force people to know Jesus Christ and to love him. It's not how it works. They have to choose by their own accord. Now, at near the end of the Bible in Revelation, the Lord tells us, let the righteous be righteous, let the holy be holy, let the unjust be unjust. He tells us that. Let them be as they are going to be. But we are in a battle and these things are going to get worse and worse. And we need to hold true to the scripture and hold true to the word of God and not back down from the truth, even if there are consequences, because there will be. And the scripture has warned us. So I was just wanted to share that with you. Um, pretty terrible topics. Not fun. Um, but that's where we're heading. That is the way, that's where the world is heading. And the world is heading to judgment. And all those who are not written in the Lamb's Book of Life will worship the Antichrist Obama. And will take the mark of the beast. And will perish in the lake of fire for all eternity. So not everyone is going to be saved, but my hope is that a great number will, and they will be saved uh, through the mercy of the Lord's judgments and before then. So turn to the Lord if you do not know Jesus Christ. Pray to Him, seek Him, and accept Him. There is a message, a prayer at the end of my videos that you can pray, and you will be saved. And you need to turn to the Lord repent and turn away from sin and seek the Lord to strengthen you and to teach you and to guide you. I love you my brothers and sisters. May God bless you and your families. Your brother Christopher.